Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new video coming to you once again from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Behind me here, you do see some train cars. That's because we're gonna head over here and check out what is known as the Railroaders Memorial Museum. It's not open right now. I am here bright and early. We're able to see some things from the outside and we're gonna cross this pedestrian bridge, get some views overhead and walk around the outside of the property. There is some outside equipment. I probably will return at a future date to see the insides because it is really significant and has a lot of importance to the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Railroad that once was located here with the machine shop, repair shop, and so on. So if you want to see what kind of equipment we could check out today, all you got to do is just come along with me. Now, not only does this give you access across the road and across the tracks, it gives you a fantastic viewing platform for any train activity. Just to give you a glimpse as to what I'm talking about here, you can see, you know, we're right on the rails. That platform, which is part of the Railroaders Museum Memorial is closed right now, but that would allow you access to get over to the roundhouse over there and to get inside everything, but it is closed for the time being. But this is open to the public, the one I'm on now. And I could definitely see myself coming here in the future, do some train spotting. But as we look over here though, do have some older pieces of equipment here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So at the very end we got a tanker car there, a couple of coach cars, and then this old looks like I'm not sure if that's Conrail or not, that crane. And it looks like to be a uh, converted mail car to be in use with the crane. Almost looks like that, at least. You can see some of the old logoing. Very iconic for the Pennsylvania Railroad. Again, Altoona was, at one time, like the railroading capital. And the Pennsylvania Railroad, which is one of the more famous ones here, was located right here. These buildings were part of the machine shops, repair shops, manufacturing facilities. So if you are generally fond of that particular railroad, I highly advise you to come check this out for yourself. Now, there's a lot of equipment here. We're going to be able to walk on the outskirts of it. The outside perimeter of the fence is open, so we can see things from a distance, but we won't be able to get inside any of the buildings, but that is okay. Something is better than nothing. Here's a looking into the yard here. They got some various pieces of equipment, some signal towers. But we'll see those a little bit closer from the ground level. So let's get down there and check them out. Here's a closer look at those cars here. Pretty sure they'll never see the day of service again, but at least they're not being scrapped as far as I know. No matter the condition of them, it's always cool to see railroad cars, even if they're in a static condition, just to admire them from a distance.
And just remember, it's never a good idea to play on the road at a crossing or to stand in the middle of the tracks. But in this case, it's okay. So once you get down the steps here, we got a couple different directions we could go. Now I know a lot of stuff is over there, but up here, there's only a short section we could go without having to walk around the entire block. So we'll focus on this first. Altoona Pipe and Steel, they're still making some noise over there. And you can see the sets of wheels here too. That building says it's the Harry Bennett Memorial Roundhouse. Got some tracks running right into it. Going from one building to the other. Now I know it's not gonna be the best view through the fence here, but again, it's better than nothing. So I'll try and get you some shots through the bars so you don't have to get this view the entire time. There's actually a really unique car right there, if you guys could see it, where that platform is. That's like a um, combination of a flatbed, flat car, heavy hauler. It's got an axle on it, too, that actually could articulate around turns. So that's meant to carry something large and heavy. And you can see the length of it, too. And all the wheels on it, that's... Not something you see rolling on the rails every day. Those are for specialized loads, extremely heavy, and not really meant for short line railroads with sharp turns. Oh, with the ambiance here in the city, it almost sounds like we're at an active railroad shop. There's equipment, there's beeping, there's trucks. Here we get a little view here of some of this stuff. Got a Pennsylvania tender car. A little railroad speeder right there. You guys remember those. I rode on one of those. And here's a view of that, uh, that car we were just talking about. This car right here on the left is actually a box car converted over to what looks to be like a I believe a giant generator. There's a big motor in there. You can see the shadow cut out of someone doing something by the wheels on the tracks and there's some cabooses up ahead. But we're going to walk around now to the other side because there's even more to see from the other end of the park here. So I'll see you over there in about two seconds. And just like that, we are back and got something to show you here. Lucky find, blue Conrail caboose. That is really neat. They're sitting here in the roundhouse area and has seen much better days, but unmistakable, very recognizable. That blue paint scheme, you can recognize them anywhere. And still seeing the old Conrail numbers on it and the logo. Pretty awesome. Without a doubt, some interesting pieces of equipment here. Something I just spotted in the distance there. You see that? It almost looks like, I mean, it's a cab of a locomotive. It almost looks like a really tiny diesel switcher, like a Conrail unit. It caught my eye. It just stands out like a little blue Smurf. Pretty neat looking.
So here is the other overhead walking platform that is currently closed. What it does bring you over here has elevator access and stairs, but for the time being is off limits, but something to consider using in the future. It'll take you across the roadway, the rails, and bring you here safely if you don't want to do the steps. You can also see there's nice viewing platforms here with some benches to literally watch the trains go by. And at any given moment, I've witnessed three trains within 10 minutes. I've also witnessed no trains within 30 minutes. It is all by chance of luck, but without a doubt, if you sit here for any given amount of time, you'll witness some Norfolk Southern freight trains rolling by. A little bit of an information plaque here. City of Altoona, welcome to the east side. It has some markers here for some destination points. But directly behind that is the other side now. It looks like they're actually doing some construction on it. That's why it's closed. But there is a really beautiful piece of equipment here. Where do you see this? Electric locomotive. Wow, that thing is a beast. You see the pantograph towers. Works just like a trolley. This is a fully electric locomotive. Pennsylvania 4913. I got to snap a couple photos of this. Kind of reaching through the fence here. Here's a good shot of it though. Just to imagine seeing this coming down the rails and it actually would be kind of like a sneak attack. You wouldn't hear the normal rumble of a diesel locomotive. But that is really awesome. Now just to give you a little step back in time, here's a different look. Whether you're in color or black and white, it's still an awesome piece of equipment. But there's more to see, so let's keep moving on. There's a wheel truck. You can see the ribs on the inside of the wheels. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that design was to help cool the wheels off to keep them from getting overheated. I could be wrong, but for some reason that stands out to me. So we're now looking on the other side of that electric locomotive we got. Looks like uh, possibly a luggage coach car and a luggage or mail car at the end of it there. Got a little switcher locomotive there too. You can see it right there. And something that does stand out that is not a piece of railroad equipment, but probably for the maintenance of rails is this blue beast of a equipment with a single headlight on it. I don't know what that is or what it's used for. If anyone has any information, feel free to share it down below. Another passenger coach car here. There's that other side of the locomotive and the turntable straight ahead. You can see all the bay doors there. Most likely there is equipment inside, but not sure what it is until we actually return and get a full tour. So two quick questions for you guys. Number one, what do you think of the tour so far? Although it's not a full, you know, total access tour, what we're seeing, at least in my eyes, is worth checking out, worthy of a video. Number two, would you want to come here for yourself and check it out in person? Comment down below, let me know. So here we have, it's a scale test weight car. One of the more unusual pieces of railroad equipment is a scale test weight car, such as displayed here. Railroads charge their customers based upon the weight of goods shipped. After a car is loaded, the railroad moved the car 
to a railroad yard where the car would be weighed on a large scale. If you want to read the rest of it, you can just pause the video there. And now we're making our way to the other side where we kind of started the video. Over there is where the speeder is, that generator box car, and some other piece of equipment. So now we'll see it from this side. And here's a little glimpse too into the roundhouse from another angle. Right in the distance there is the Conrail caboose. That is a good shot right there. We've got the Pennsylvania Railroad logo, the building in the backdrop. It looks pretty neat. Truck is video bombing me. How dare you? Now, a quick piece of information I'd like to point out is that the people who run the Railroaders Memorial Museum are the same people that are in charge of Horseshoe Curve. So my advice during normal operating season, obviously check their websites, Facebook pages, but you could come here and buy a package pass, which will give you access to the museum here and access to Horseshoe Curve. That way you don't have to buy them separately, two different locations. You can see both of them in one day. They're within 15 minutes of each other. It'd be a great way to spend your day surrounding yourself with some awesome railroading history and action. So save yourself a few dollars, buy the combo pass here, then go to Horseshoe Curve later. Pennsylvania 4468. Looks like a coach car. Another thing to note too, they have plenty of parking here for visitors. There's no charge for parking. Park, walk around, enjoy your time here. There's even a banner here about Horseshoe Curve. And there's that sign, look at that. That's worthy of a shot right there. And it definitely looks like you could go through some of the equipment. That caboose has a platform and steps. You could walk through that one. And I'm sure there's more inside and in the roundhouse as well, but. Like I said, it's gonna make me want to return for a future visit and see everything on the inside that they have to offer. But there she is. I'm gonna frame this up, get a nice shot right here. So as I just mentioned, they have a sign right out front here. Admission includes Horseshoe Curve. So get the most bang for your buck if you come here first. I'm gonna go back to wide angle, get you one final shot here. Getting some blue patches in the sky, making for a really nice backdrop here. Well, everyone, that's gonna conclude my tour here of the Railroaders Memorial Museum here in Altoona, Pennsylvania. From what I could see, they definitely have a lot of great pieces of equipment. Everything from Conrail to electric equipment to some fantastic freight cars, passenger cars, and so on. A lot more to see, though. Inside the buildings, there is what you would similarly see to Steamtown. They have a history museum, a lot of stuff you'll learn here about the Pennsylvania Railroad. And again, this is the former grounds of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So you're walking on a piece of history here. These buildings at one time were the machine repair manufacturing shops. There's a lot of information online too. I only know, you know, very basics. I don't really dive too deep into the history of what used to be, you know, when it changed. I more or less like to come here and just admire the equipment and just kind of brush up on the history a little bit. Not to say I don't appreciate the history, it's just that you can really get lost in it. There's tons of information to educate yourself on, and I'm not a historian or a researcher, but I do appreciate anything related to railroading. So when I knew that this was in walking distance to my hotel, 
I had to come check it out. And of course, being down here in Altoona, Horseshoe Curve is on my list today too, which you'll see in a separate video. But if you have anything you want to share about what you've seen today, I'd love to hear your comments. Leave your feedback down below. Next year, I do see myself returning to check this out and give you a more in-depth personal tour as long as everything is open. But with that said, I am going to end things here, maybe try to catch a train or two and get on with the rest of my day. So I just want to thank you every, thank you all for watching. As mentioned, if you did enjoy the video, best way to show your appreciation is to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already aware, I do have a Facebook page you can follow me on. It is free. It's a public page. You don't need a Facebook account. I do share photos, details, and some videos that don't always make it to my YouTube channel. I also have a Patreon page. $2 or more will give you exclusive access to some sneak peeks and things that I'm working on before the general public finds out about it. If you donate $10 or more, you get that same access, plus your name will be featured on an upcoming video. And lastly, if you'd ever like to send me anything to open up on my Sunday Night Live weekend show, I do have a P.O. box listed down below as well. I open everything live and it's a makes for a fun way to wrap up the weekend to hang out with everyone and to see what was sent in the mail. So all that information will be down below in the description. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.